Alright, I think I finally got enough material around to get this bed done. Uh, I found some, I don't know what that is, one by two maybe, one by two and a half, and some angle iron, inch and a half by inch and a half. That angle iron is just going to be a frame around, I'm going to build a wooden deck, wooden bed, flat bed, out of pressure treat or possibly rough cut hardwood. And I believe this angle iron was off from, a, I think it was off from a bed frame. But the plan is, where these pivot pins are, I'm going to weld a piece of pipe underneath of this. It'll sit there. I'm going to weld a piece of pipe right to the bottom of this for a pivot. And then, you know, put some gussets up front so that it sits level. And then I'm going to put another piece of this stuff across this way and then the frame i'll make it just a square frame out of the angle iron that's going to sit right on top of the whole thing so really this is just going to be a protective edge for the wood and this is actually going to take all the weight the structure of it um i thought about putting a electric over hydraulic dump on the back of it but I don't really think I'm going to keep this thing around when it's done. After I get the bed done and the snow plow on it. And I got the graphics for the hood once I get that done. I might just sell it or trade it for something else. If I was going to keep it, I was going to add a hydraulic cylinder underneath the bed. And add a uh, uh, electric over hydraulic uh, dump hoist system. Kind of like a dump trailer. And just have a push button up on the dash. But I don't think I'm going to do that because it's probably looking at five, six, seven hundred dollars just to add that. And I mean, if you're going to keep it, it would be nice to have. But for what I'm going to do with it, I'm just going to have it. So I'm going to bolt it down so it's a flatbed. But if you ever needed to use it as a dump or uh, raise it up to do any work underneath there, you could just unbolt the front of it and pivot it right up. So I guess the first thing I'm going to do, I'm not sure, probably take these angle irons, cut them, the ends at a 45. It's going to be 52 inches wide and probably 36 inches long. And I'm just going to 45 the ends, weld it together, square it up, and then I'll see if I can find some pipe for that, for the pivot. And here's what I've ended up with so far. I've got the frame belt for the wood deck I'm going to put on it. Nice. I got these cut, I think, uh, 36 inches long. It's 36 inches long and like 52 inches wide. Uh, all I did here for the pivot, I just took a piece of this. Uh, frame that I used cut it about three inches and then I measured out about an inch at the bottom and just wedged it so it's three inches by one inch and then I came up and uh, just drilled a hole through it so the bolt would fit it none of this is welded together right now it's just sitting there just to get an idea of how it's all gonna go I'm gonna have to add I have these blocks just sitting here to hold it level so I'll end up either cleaning these two up and welding them right to the frame or making a couple new ones. Um, this frame is really just to protect the outside of the wood, the edge of it, so it doesn't get splintered and chipped up and all that. I'm gonna use one inch thick rough cut white oak because I have it. This is a little bit too tall. This is probably an inch and three eighths, so I might end up taking the plasma cutter or the cutting wheel on the grinder and just taking maybe, I don't know, three eighths to a half inch right off. Just trim it all the way around. It won't take long. Clean that up. And that way the wood will stick up above this metal frame. So if you have wood or whatever on there and you want to dump it, it won't slide down and get caught on this. Uh, other than that, like I said, nothing's welded up. 
everything's just setting together. I got this all squared up. I'll probably end up adding angle iron along here and along here full length just so I can drill through. I'm gonna use carriage bolts through the wood so I don't have to have actual bolt heads sticking up. Carriage bolt looks like that's a carriage bolt. It's got a rounded head. If you drill the hole so you beat this in with a hammer that square head will actually hold it so you won't have to have a wrench or anything on the top. You just put your lock nut on the bottom of the flat washer and crank it down tight. So that's where we're at. I'll get this all welded up and I'm going to add maybe another support down the center here. I got to lengthen those out a little bit. They were a little short. Just cut some pieces off. I have some more out here. Well, there it is. All done for the most part. I dug into my rough cut lumber. This is all white oak. Uh, it's all, I've got all the edges cleaned up, and cut the length. I just have to bolt it down, drill it and bolt it down. This angle iron frame isn't welded to the main frame or anything. I'm not sure if I'm going to weld it or bolt it yet, but I must have done it. It's pinned in there. Oh, yeah. That works. So. Let's see down there. Lighting kind of sucks, but I got it pinned in, the whole frame's all welded up. Just gotta clean it up a little bit, paint it. Dump's pretty good. It's probably 45 degrees, give or take. So that's all there is to it. through the top through this frame through this it's two and a half inches thick drew through all of it and bolt it down that way instead of welding it on what's nice about it is I mean I can take these four clamps off take this frame with the boards that are in there tight I had to beat them in there with a ball peen hammer I can take that whole frame off and set it right up on the bench and Do anything I need to. Up there, sand it, stain it, round the edges, whatever. And then uh, just set it right back on there and bolt it down. I think that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm going to sand it a little bit. I'm not going to take it all the way down. I don't know if you can see it or not. See these? This was cut with a circle mill, not a band mill. Old school style. These boards are over 20 years old, even though they look like they're pretty fresh sawn. They've been stickered up inside for 20 years in a pile. So they're nice and dry, air dried. But I want to leave, sand it down so it's smooth, but still leave those striations in it guy at work did that with some rough cut on his truck on side racks and it looked really nice so I'm gonna do the same thing with this and see how it turns out nice thing about wood you can always just sand it right down smooth if you want to run it through the planer but that's pretty much it for the dump bed. All right, drilling some holes. Figured I'd show you what works for me since I broke about four or five drill bits. Uh, I'm using quarter inch carriage bolts. So it takes a quarter inch 
can see it. Quarter inch carriage bolt. It takes a quarter inch drill bit. Now when you're drilling through the wood, I'm using a smaller drill bit. I think it's two sizes smaller than a quarter inch, so I don't know, seven, 30 seconds maybe or something. It doesn't matter, anything smaller than a quarter inch. Drilling down through the wood, through the angle iron underneath, and just drilling all those holes. And then coming back through with a quarter inch drill bit and just drilling straight down through the wood and not going through the steel. Cleaning those holes up because if you waller that, if you get into the steel with the quarter inch bit and this thing starts wobbling or shaking at all, it's going to waller this hole out. And then this square, see that square, when you pull that down into the wood, that's what holds it from turning when you tighten the nut. And if that's any bigger than a quarter inch, the hole, that won't hold. It'll just spin. So that's what's working for me. After I get these drilled out to a quarter inch down through the wood and not the steel, I'll take all the boards off and drill the steel with a quarter inch drill bit. And then you can put your bolts through. So, and I'll show you, I've been using a clamp because it just so much faster. Let's see. So I'll drill through the hole. I'm just using the clamp to slowly put pressure down so that I don't wear myself out because there's a lot of holes. I think there's like 30 some holes. It doesn't always want to drill all the way through. Jump bit. the thread going through the steel like that just the wood that's why you can drill the steel out one size bigger than a quarter inch whatever that is or two sizes it doesn't really matter as long as it's a little bit bigger and this is nice and tight through the wood
once you get your bolts in. Let's take the impact, draw it down higher shot. idea. Well, there you go. They tighten down pretty nice. That side's already done. I mean, you'll get a few you need to do something to, or you might even, you know, if this spins as you're tightening that nut up from underneath, if the head of that spins, you're pretty much screwed. I mean, you can try to hold it. If you can get it to hold with a pair of vice grips or put your finger on it or maybe take a, a clamp and put over the top of it or, I don't know, maybe a flat file. If you laid a flat file across here and clamped it down, tightened it up so it couldn't move. But other than that, that's all there is to a carriage bolt. All right, here's a snow plow I got for it. It's a John Deere. It's got a model number. I don't know, I paid 40 bucks for it. And these mounts right here, they were out here on the outside edge. It was too wide for, the Rhino's already got a plow mount frame mounted underneath it. And it was 15 inches from center to center. This was, I don't even know, like 23 or something like that. So I just took the cutting wheel, the grinder into the cutting wheel on it and cut it off, cut both of them off. Cut this piece of steel out, piece of scrap steel, and then welded those on in the center. Well, from the center out, seven and a half inches. I MIG welded those on. The plate, I'm gonna stick weld. Just because, actually the MIG welder was getting hot welding all that up. So, I could MIG weld it, but I think it'll just hold better than the, my old Lincoln arc welder. We'll do a good job on it. And that's pretty much it for this. It should mount right up. I don't even know how big it is. Big enough. It's got a rubber cutting edge on it. And this is the only thing I have to do after I get this welded up. I'm going to finish cutting these off and grind them down smooth so don't, nobody gets cut on it. But, and then I'd test it, but I still don't have the ends for the cables on the winch, so I can't even. I think it must be the hook goes here. The hook goes here, and those will pin up underneath the frame on the bottom. And the winch will lift it here. It's not overly heavy, but it's heavy enough. All right, that didn't take too long. I'll weld it up. Stick weld it up. It's not too bad. I don't stick weld very often. That burnt pretty good. Got some heat down there. Got it all welded up. 
every inch of it. I wasn't going to weld the, every inch of the whole thing, but um, I did. Had a couple holes in the plate, so I just welded it right down through there, too. So, there, done. I got the frame for the dump bed painted. I'll show that. not painted it's primed it's all primed the boards are outside I threw some black paint on those I'll clear coat them once I get them on so tonight I'll get the wood stove cranking and then I'll paint this black and that'll be ready to go on tomorrow um, Here's the piece that I made for the air box. Well, not the air box. There is no air box. It was missing. Here's the air filter for a four hundred EX four fifty R. I took in uh Took my grinder and ground that down on the inside. This is a three inch pipe and it fits perfectly down over that. Just like that. And there's a pen sticking out right there on the bottom. I'll show you more of it to get that hard. That is gonna go Gonna go inside there like that. The filter's gonna go on. I'm not even gonna piss with that vent. And then right here somewhere, I'm gonna make a mount with a removable plate with a hole drilled in the center that'll go over top of that pin and it'll keep that. I mean, I'm gonna put a clamp on it here. I'm gonna clamp it to that, but I'm gonna put just that plate on the bottom side so that the, when you're bouncing around, that air filter can't just pop off but it'll still be removable. I'll weld a frame for it and then bolt it on. And this will be just about done, other than the hood. That's a mess. I'll clean that up. Wrap it with camel wrap. Finish painting the doors. This is how far I've got with the camel wrap. Should have started filming this. When I started, but I figured it wasn't going to be easy, quick, or turn out very good. But it's turning out pretty good. Trimming around all the holes is kind of a pain. Getting the heating this up. See, ya, see that? Heating that up and getting it to push all the way in so you can cover these sides is really a pain. When I bought this online, it said, I watched a video that they had. I forget where I got it, but anyways, they said to just use pieces, like, I don't know, maybe two foot, instead of trying to do it in one big sheet, and I thought that would not look good. So I didn't care how long it was gonna take, I was gonna try and do it all in one piece, and now I'm kinda wishing I would've, because I pieced some of this in in the front, because I just couldn't get it to, it was just, it, and then coming around this corner, it was just widening up. So actually right here, I mean, you can't see it at all, but I cut it all the way down and then spliced it. So right here, maybe you can see. Just right here, all the way down through there, is spliced. And once you get it heated up and you use like an old credit card or something hard piece of plastic to work it in there. None of this is trimmed. That's probably almost as far as it's gonna go. I gotta trim all the way around it when I get done. Working my way across, I've got one more of these holes to do and then a headlight. And then I've got, I gotta put a piece on each side about like that. And then I'm gonna do oh, this piece all the way across. 
But it actually, for right now, I mean, I got some air bubbles to get out of it. It's looking pretty good. Hopefully it sticks. I mean, it seems to be sticking pretty good. I've been tucking this, these edges down around. There it is, all done. The camo actually turned out pretty nice, a lot better than I thought. I mean, you can kind of see. That's why I didn't want to put it in in pieces because I didn't, I don't really care for the look of that line up through there. But other than that, it turned out pretty good. Deering welded on the front, winch hooked up. Um, doors are done and painted. It's a big difference from when I got it, if anybody's seen the other videos. The plow fits. I just got it on the back. It's sitting on the back now, but that all, I hooked it up, that works. Dump box. Flatbed turned out nice. So there it is, all done. Everything works good. The seats are still tore up. Don't care. Well, time to get the next project out. I have a... I think it's an 05 Honda 450. I'm going to do next. Doesn't need much. Just cosmetic and... Just about all cosmetic. 